Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the news on Zodiac. Thanks for joining us this evening. You're with me, Robert Karua. Let's have a look at the headlines. Finance Minister Felix Mulusu says inadequate financial mechanism remain a major setback in the implementation of development projects in the country. Mulusu said this as Malawi government signed a five-year, one trillion kwacha grant agreement with the U.S. government towards realization of the country's development blueprint Malawi 2063. Outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Malawi, Robert Scott, said U.S. shares similar goals like those of Malawi. As such, the grant aims to at, at beefing up implementation of a wide range of sectors such as health for economic growth. Chimome Padata with more in this report. The one trillion kwaja grant agreement will cover a number of projects that include strengthening the public sector's accountability and effectiveness as well as bolstering performance of the health sector, just to mention but a few. Minister of Finance Felix Mulusu says the grant will lay a stepping stone for the implementation of the Malawi 2063 development blueprint as he feels financing remains the greatest challenge. Starting with you know, laying foundation for our vision you know, 2063. So we have not uh, costed you know, all the uh, financial resources that will be required for us to achieve I know that vision 2063, but we are right now laying the foundation with the support you know, from our cooperating partners. Outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Malawi, Robert Scott, says the American government shares similar development goals like those of Malawi. As such, the agreement will respond to Malawi's development needs. A lot of this aligns perfectly with uh, Vision 2063. What we're looking at as well here is um, some of our ongoing programs are going to continue, which are the large work that we do in health, the PEPFAR program, the anti-malaria program, assistance in that area. Agricultural development is an area that we're really pushing on. Um, and what will complement the five-year USAID program is the new MCC compact. The agreement will see USAID implement projects in the new five-year bilateral agreement that runs through 2026. This is Chimwemwe Padata for Zodiac. The Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources has given Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi ESCOM until 31st December to transfer powers of single buyer to Power Market Limited, having been operating the system illegally. The committee's chairperson, Willan Chilenga, has warned the company against clinging to the system, which he alleged hinders power producing investors from making investments. ESCOM chairperson on technical and projects, Overton Mandalasi, fears that PML may not be able to execute the system by the end of this year, but was quick to say they were obliged. They were obliged. We have a report filed by Western Gota. Last year, the Power Marketing Limited was formed to carry out the single buyer system which had previously been carried out by ESCOM before its unbundling. It has emerged now that ESCOM has been clinging to the system which the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources deemed illegal as authority to do that is said to be on PML. The chairperson, Welani Chirenga, has told us that independent power producers failed to make investments because they were scared of the single buyer system which ESCOM as a distributor was operating. He has thus said they are meeting with Mera, the Attorney General, PML and the company itself made a resolve that ESCOM should no longer use the system beyond 31st December this year. To make sure that the laws that we pass in Parliament are fully implemented, in this case ESCOM has been operating illegally because in 2020 the license of single buyer system was issued to PML by Mera. So it is PML which had that license and they were supposed to be using it, but ESCOM was clinging to it, sitting on it, 
illegally. ESCOM's chairperson on technical and projects over to the Mandalasi was not sure what will befall the company when the powers are transferred to PML, despite saying they will do so. He doubts that the PML has the requisite knowledge and skills to discharge the single buyer system. Every time you have an, a problem, there are different solutions. And you always come out to say that this is the best solution to, to, to follow. Obviously, there will be challenges going forward, particularly the issue of capacity building within the, all the organizations that are in the energy sector. Um, and that the people have the requisite uh, knowledge and they have also the requisite skills. According to the Electricity Act of 2016, ESCOM is supposed to distribute and leave selling power to end users to the Power Marketing Limited. For Zodiac, I'm Western Guta. Meanwhile, the Malawi Mozambique Power Interconnection Project will miss the, its December 2022 deadline due to what Implement Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi ESCOM says are effects of COVID-19, which have obstructed progress in the implementation. ESCOM Senior Projects Manager Alexander Kaitani says the project, which includes construction of 400 kV substation at uh, Matambo in Mozambique and Malawi Power Transmission 400 kV, for 400 kV interconnection will now be completed end October 2023. Meanwhile, ESCOM says they now have new they now, they now have identified an Indian firm L and T contractor for technical compliance, mobilization, and design activities, among others. Kaitan explains. The reason for the delays are mostly attributed to the uh, oncoming of the COVID, which came as we were already doing some preparatory works for the project and that affected uh, our work and organization just to mention this project is being jointly um, managed or implemented by a team comprising officers from edm in mozambique and escom in malawi so we have a joint project implementation unit so before the pandemic we used to meet uh, discuss, uh, resolve technical issues, come up with documentation and so on. But when the COVID came, it, that became a bit of a problem. So we had to shift to online platforms and at the very first beginning it was a difficult thing. But along the way we managed to find a solution and that's why now we are where we are. So there is that delay. Transparency organization CSAT has backed calls to amend the Public Finance Management Act, arguing the current one does not have provisions for stiffer punishments for violations by public officers. Its executive director, Willa Gambwandila, made the remarks in Mzuzu yesterday when the organization engaged the journalist on the viability of the act and the access to information in checking abuse of public resources. Meanwhile, CSAT has established a national social accountability toll-free line that acts as a platform for communities to report issues of suspected abuse of public funds. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Natural Resources, Nancy Tembo, has conceded that government is uh, having challenges to enforcement penalties on companies and individuals that are deliberately polluting rivers due to lack of financial resources. Speaking after touring the cleaning of Moody River in Blanta on Tuesday, Responsible Minister Nancy Tembo asked companies and citizens to observe responsibility in protecting the environment. Minister Tembo speaks with our Christopher Sande. As government, we have several pieces of legislation, uh, legislation that are, are there in place to protect such uh, natural resources like uh, the rivers. Uh, I think our challenge is enforcement. And uh, working with the, uh, the, uh, the Blanta City Council, I think we should be able to do more. We have been challenged here. They have done so much with very little. And I think we, um, in this city of Blantyre, the city council, and us as a government, and also private sector, we should do more to assist and to, to do our own bit in making sure that we rev uh, revamp this river. They have done quite a bit of work, but there's still a lot more to be done. And I think. Uh, Everybody needs to take a part and uh, make sure that we bring Blantyre to a state. Blantyre is doing very well. Blantyre 
is growing into a beautiful city and we can do more as citizens of this city let's do more to make sure that this uh, uh, the river the mood river becomes the a prime prime real estate where people can go and relax and just uh, enjoy the beauty of this city this effort here will bring that back and i'm so impressed and uh, would like to encourage them to continue on this path and that there's a lot of people these are, are in art they are an art grouping but they've taken up um, the cleaning up of the river taking their art marrying it with this uh, environmental issue that's the way to go and there is a lot of us in this city that we can do the same we can be uh, an NGO that is into health but we can use that energy or that is in health to connect it to the environment and do our bit within the Moody River. That's Minister of, uh, Forest, Minister of Forest and Natural Resources, Nan Setembo. Manota Mpande is founder of Arts Malawi. Part of the waste that we've collected, we've collected in 67 days, we've managed to collect over 40 tons, uh, 40 tons of waste. That's 40,000 kgs of waste that we've collected. So that's how bad uh, that stretch of the river has been. Uh, we are very blessed today that we had uh, the minister actually travel and tour and have a look at what we've done. And I think she will also push a lot more agendas on, uh, on, on, on waste. But we feel that there's a lot more that government can do. Uh, we've just heard, I think yesterday, that another injunction has been put on the banning of the plastic waste, of the, plas of the thin plastics. So it's all right for these organizations to keep going back to the courts and putting up injunctions. I think as Malawians, we really need to take uh, uh, individual responsibilities on what we do with the waste. As I said, you can see this waste here. This waste is human waste. It's individual waste. And this waste is also, from our, from our time in the river, we've also had... We've also, had, we've also encountered a lot of industrial waste. So as individuals, we need to take responsibility of our waste. And as organizations, they also need to take responsibility of their waste. And we also have very big corporates, especially in Blantyre. You know, we've been here 67 days. It's very, I don't know, I don't know what word I can use, discouraging that we've got corporates that earn billions and billions of quatches on a yearly basis, and none of them have come in and taken a corporate environmental responsibility. President Lazarus Chakwira has left for Kenya, where he is expected to hold bilateral talks with his Kenyan counterpart, Uhuru Kenyatta, before proceeding to Dubai and Scotland. President Chakwira said before departure at Kamuz International Airport that his visit is expected to strengthen business ties for the country's economic growth. Consolidation of our relationship will be of benefit to Malawi in many ways. Not just the exchange of our people's goods and services, it is to mark another level of cooperation because Kenya and Malawi have been friends even before independence. So we are consolidating trade relations we're consolidating diplomatic relations and we are consolidating in these days not just bilateral but multilateral relationships because friends of Kenya are also friends of Malawi. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. We'll be back with more after this.
Mibando ya sofa, dining set, mabedi, makofi table, zisamakale ngati zolandira kuli kufanana ai. Ku Davina Furnishers, ama banga mibando, ma sofa set, ma dining set, mene inuyo ni age mukufunira. Podziwa kuti andufe ti makala nkukonda kosi ana si Welcome back. A look at the headlines. As moving on with the news, some beneficiaries of this year's Affordable Inputs Program EIP may have to wait for weeks before accessing the input on the market despite President Lazarus Chakwila launching the program on Saturday. A visit by Zodiac to some districts with hard-to-reach areas like Mangochi, Neno, Nchisi and Mzimba have confirmed that while the suppliers are yet to start delivering the inputs, beneficiary registers are also yet to be released. But spokesperson for the Ministry of Agriculture, Gretchen Lungu, said the registers have already been dispatched to some districts. He explains. The ministry, we already started printing the registers and uh, we dispatched some of these registers for some districts. And uh, there are indeed some districts which are yet to uh, receive these registers. But uh, we are trying our, our level best to make sure that uh, each and every district gets each register at the same time. Because we are also using the AIP website where we uploaded the registers. So every stakeholder is given an opportunity to even download uh, the registers there so that uh, they can use in their areas where the registers which were printed here at the ministry are yet to be delivered. Uh, in regards to uh, uh, kickstarting the program in different areas, we can say that uh, that was our also expectation that once we launched the program, we were supposed to go on the ground now to start selling the inputs to the farmers. Uh, for your information, the day we launched the program, there were some farmers there uh, in the Achirazu who managed to buy because we, we made an arrangement uh, to show people that uh, we have really kickstarted the program. But then now, challenge that has been there is that um, in some areas or the suppliers who are, have been given the contract, most of them were supposed to still be given in some weeks for them now to get prepared. You must understand that uh, nobody can order the prices abroad without a contract. So most of the suppliers, especially the small and medium enterprises, they are using our contract which we have given them as a collateral for them to access bank loans and at the same time also procure fertilizers using the funds they get from the bank. The Cannabis Regulatory Authority, CRA, says only four out of 69 companies issued with licenses for medicinal and industrial hemp cultivation in the country have started growing the crop. However, CRA Director General Dr. Ketulo Salipila says they expect the number of licensed growers to increase when the rain season begins since majority of the companies will be relying on the rains. We have a report by Blessings Kangwambe. Director General for the Cannabis Regulatory Authority, CRA, Dr. Ketu Rosalibira, told us that the four companies and cooperatives currently cultivating the crop are on irrigation farming. Dr. Salibira was, however, uncommitted on the volumes of the crop this season, claiming it will be known once a majority of the companies have also rolled out their activities. The numbers are probably low, but uh, if you understand that, uh, many of them are waiting for the season to begin because uh, not all have uh, um, facilities for education. So many will depend on the parent set. Yeah, I, I'm sure with time, many of them will want to engage into uh, the irrigation. But you know that this is capital intensive and it's not something that can just be done overnight. While acknowledging potential for the crop to boost the country's economy, an economic expert, Miwa Tobias, believes enhancing development of irrigation facilities is crucial among the licensed companies. Those who are saying they are waiting for rain, let's wait and let us hope that once the rain falls, then they will also plant. We need this because the information available is that the market for products from that crop uh, is actually very strong. We believe it's a crop that can transform the economy. Uh, we may begin to forget about scarcity of foreign exchange, but there are also industries that can be born out of actually products from that crop. According to CRA, four companies that have so far started growing the crop, change cannabis cooperatives, Invegro Limited, CPG Investments, and Women of Vision. And in sports, the Basketball Africa League qualifiers for Central Zone Basketball League outfit Bravehearts have been relocated from South Africa's Cape Town to Tanzania's Dar es Salaam. 
Brave Arts Technical Director Dominic Mnyenyembe told us that the organizers of the qualifiers, International Basketball Federation FIBA, considered the expenses that the team will incur to travel to the Rainbow Nation, hence changing the venue and dates from 21st to 26th October. Mnyenyembe has described the development as an advantage to them as they will spend less, though they are still short of 8 million kwajira travel for the games. Bright Kanyama reports. The Central Zone Basketball League outfit Bravehearts Basketball Club were due to travel to South Africa's Cape Town today, Tuesday, to take part in the Basketball Africa League qualifiers. However, the games have been moved to Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. This comes after Bravehearts submitted a proposal to International Basketball Federation to consider changing the venue for them to reduce traveling costs. Brave Hearts Technical Director Dominic Mnyenyembe has described the development as an advantage to them as the cost for the trip have been, has been reduced with traveling to Dar es Salaam less costly than traveling to Cape Town. However, Mnyenyembe has disclosed that they still have a deficit of 8 million kwacha to travel to Dar es Salaam despite the change of the venue. FIBA was looking at our expenses to travel from Malawi to Cape Town, it was too much. So they moved us from the group in, um, in Cape Town to a group in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, which we think is working good for us because, as you can see, Dar is not very far. At least we can hire a bus and we can use a bus to Dar es Salaam, which is by the end of the day cutting our cost. Brevance is expected to travel to Tanzania this coming Saturday with the tournament expected to start on 26th of October. Brave Arts will face three teams, thus City Oilers from Uganda, Kalanishi Heat from Tanzania, and Burundi's New Stars. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kenyama. And in other news, a new report says Africa needs to invest up to $50 billion a year in order to cope with the growing threat of climate change. The African Union and World Meteorological Organization warned that about 120 million poor people face floods, drought, displacement and extreme heat by the end of this decade if nothing is done. It also warns that all the African remaining grassiers are on track to disappear by 2040s. Africa has warmed faster than the global average, but has been responsible for just 4% of the world's greenhouse emission. And uh, that's about it. Robert Kuru, and thanks for watching. Anakubala ani. Nangama oji tirajiani mwenye nguo ino ya Anakubala Mother's Day. Koneta ni chukundi janu kwa mayu anu kapena mai aliensi amene anakulirani po wakulira ploti ku air wing kapena kukunda mumzinda walirongwe. Mwenye nguo ino ya Anakubala. Ife a smart realtors company tatsi tamitengu ya maploti atu di putso